Woo-wee! It has been a wild couple of days in the 3D printing space. I'm sure you've heard the news at least 10 times over by now. I'll give you a brief summary, but I'm also going to tell you why you shouldn't be content with Bamboo's solution. There's been two blog posts, one from Bamboo Kid, one from Spaghetti Monster. Spaghetti Monster, as I understand it, is Dr. Tao himself. So Bamboo Kid came out with a bombshell and said, bamboo printers are going to require authorization control in order to interface with the printer and do any writing. Reading will still be unencrypted. You'll be able to talk from third-party applications, but if you want to start print jobs, if you want to control the movement of the printer, you need authorization control. So they've introduced this new application called Bamboo Connect, which is supposed to be the gatekeeper that's going to handle all of the authentication. So that was a big bombshell. People got really mad. It was under the guise of security, but there were a lot of questions about whether it was your own security and the security of your printers or whether it was the security of Bamboo's own interests. Monetarily, they stand to gain a lot from the implementation of these controls. So after the initial blog post, a second blog post came out from Spaghetti Monster. He came and did damage control as best he could. He addressed a lot of, quote, misinformation and false claims, misconceptions, misunderstandings, and tried to set the record straight about what this update is really about. But he didn't really do what we needed him to do. He swept a lot of it under the rug, he explained a lot of it away, and he came up with a solution that a lot of people at face value seem happy with. But when you examine it a little further, you should understand, you should realize, this is not what we were asking for. And I'm talking about developer mode. So let's just zoom out a little bit and explain to you why you should still be upset. So there's a lot of these people that said, oh, I don't use Orca Slicer, I don't care, it's fine. Bamboo Studio, it's great. You should still be concerned about what rights have been taken away from you and what capabilities you will no longer have access to in the future. So what you need to understand is that Bamboo Connect is essentially like a gatekeeper. So you have a house and you want a cleaner. So you're going to find a cleaner that you think seems trustworthy and you're gonna let them into your home to clean it. You have the keys, you hand them over. Now, in this new scenario, there's a bouncer at the door. That bouncer says to the cleaning lady, oh, I see you have a key. The homeowner must have authorized you, but sorry, no can do, you're not on the guest list. The guest list is generated by Bamboo Connect. So Bamboo Connect is like the manager to the bouncer. What this means is that Bamboo has the ultimate authority to say who can get into your home to clean it or not to say what software you can use to talk to your own printer. And whether or not Bamboo makes a good decision about who to let in that front door, that's on them, but it has implications for you. So we as users want to be able to dictate the terms of our own hardware. We want to let whoever in the front door that we trust ourselves. Bamboo is saying no. You know, if they're not on our approved list, if they don't go through these channels, they don't have access. In the second update, the second blog post, they dialed back a little bit they introduced developer mode. And you'll have access to things like MQTT and FTP and RTSP, these communication protocols that are required for these third-party accessories, hardware and software. And a lot of people were like, okay, great, problem solved. But what you need to understand is that developer mode is a subset of LAN mode. LAN mode has its own drawbacks. When you're in LAN mode, you don't have access to Bamboo Handy. You don't get push notifications to your phone when your prints are finished. If you're wanting to upload files from Bamboo Studio, the file upload process is slow. Instead of going up to the cloud and you can be using Bamboo Studio in the meantime, you're now waiting for the very slow upload process of that file from Bamboo Studio to your printer. So yes, you regain MQTT, you regain RTSP, you regain FTP control, but you're sacrificing notifications. You're sacrificing all of those quality of life convenience features that come from the cloud ecosystem and Bamboo's own infrastructure. As it exists today, pre-firmware update, you don't have to make this same trade-off. You have the option of, quote, coming in the back door. The front door is going through Bamboo Studio or going through Bamboo Handy. The back door is talking directly to the printer using the basic communication protocols like MQTT for read and write, FTP for file transfer, and RTSP for video streaming. And by the way, those protocols, members of the community have reverse engineered them. Bamboo has not provided that information. There's no public API. It's not documented. You don't have them to thank for Panda Touch. You don't have them to thank for OpenSpool. You don't have them to thank for any of the third-party apps or whatever it may be that you enjoy using. You can restore access to those protocols if you go into developer mode, but you're giving up all of those other conveniences. As it exists today, that trade-off is not the same. That backdoor 
directly to talk to the printer is open regardless of whether you're in cloud mode or LAN mode. In the future, you now need to be in LAN mode to open the back door. So you should not be content with the solution they came up with. That is a big sacrifice. There's a trade-off there. You're not gonna have your cake and eat it too. You have to decide what is more important to you. Is it the conveniences of the cloud or is it the conveniences of third-party hardware and software? Making you pick one or the other, Bamboo has put you in a scenario where you have to decide what is more important to you. So you might say, ah, oh, you know what? It's not worth losing those cloud mode features. It's not worth losing the Bamboo Handy app. Therefore, I am not going to toggle into developer mode, so I won't be able to use a Panda Touch. I won't be able to use OpenSpool. I won't be able to do those things. Is it for your own good? Is it in the name of security? I do not think so. Think about how much they stand to gain by doing this. You're no longer gonna be putting a touch screen on your P1S. Instead, you might buy an X1C because it has a touch screen. And perhaps you'll no longer consider buying third-party filament and making your own RFID tags because the conveniences of RFID on Bamboo's own filament are just too much to give up. If you want to be able to use third-party filament and you wanna be able to use the Panda Touch, okay, you can do that, but it's at the expense of those cloud conveniences like the Bamboo Handy app. And it's really important to understand that there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use the Bamboo Handy app in LAN mode. They've just not allowed you to. The Bamboo Studio desktop application works in LAN mode. You can talk to your LAN mode printers, but none of your LAN mode printers are gonna show up on the Bamboo Handy app. So you're not gonna get notifications, you're not gonna be able to control them from your phone, none of those things. So the big picture argument that they made is security. Security, security, security. Do we really care? <laughs> Is it as big of a risk as they say? So we need to think of the likelihood and the severity. What is the likelihood somebody hacks into your home network? I mean, it happens, right? Okay, they're on your network. Are they going to get into your printer? What do they stand to gain? And what are the risks to you? Okay, they can move the printhead around if they do get in. They could heat up the printer. Okay, but the printer has thermal runaway. It has heater timeouts. It has motor current limits. So there's these safeguards in place to prevent your printer from destroying itself or setting itself on fire. So it's actually very low severity of the impact if somebody were to be maliciously manipulating your printer, in my opinion. I don't think it's a big deal. And then going back to likelihood. Okay, somebody gets on your home network. Can they immediately talk to your printer, start controlling it? No. They cannot actually do anything without the access code. You need to physically go to the printer to get the access code. So these are all already password protected. That's why if you're setting up Bamboo Studio or you're setting up a Panda Touch, it'll give you a list of your printers. It'll just scan your network. You don't need to put them in manually. But what you do need is an access code. So each printer already has its own unique password. Why are we not talking about that? That is a legitimate consideration. The example that Bamboo points to to make the claim that security is a concern is an example from Anycubic. It, it's embarrassing. Why are you comparing yourselves to Anycubic? In that scenario, a hacker contacted Anycubic and said, hey guys, you have a security vulnerability. And they ignored them. They didn't do anything. So this good Samaritan hacker, they put a message on the printers exposed to this vulnerability. It was completely harmless. And then at that point, Anycubic took it seriously. So if Bamboo is proactive and they get ahead of these things, then that shouldn't be a problem in the first place. And they already have way more security than any of those printers sitting there with no password for read or write. So the fact that they even pointed to that in the first place, a little bit strange. And then they talk about the traffic to their cloud service. So they're quoting $20,000 per month in excess traffic. They have X number of million requests that came from erroneous sources or abnormal traffic. And that creates overhead on their servers and that costs them money. And for the user, yeah, you could have uh, service disruptions, that's an issue, but ultimately it's costing them a lot of money. So the issue is that they're allowing unfettered access to their API. So people are, perhaps writing bad software. Maybe some of these print farm management software solutions are querying the temperature at an insane interval, for instance. These sorts of things can put excess strain on the servers and the cost associated with that is non-negligible. So, okay, perhaps they're trying to mitigate their own risk of having increased overhead from excess traffic. Could somebody do this maliciously to try to take down Bamboo's servers? Yes, absolutely. So it's a risk to Bamboo, but is it a risk to you? If somebody gets into your printer, are they gonna do damage? Probably not. Can you get them out of your printer? Probably just by changing the access code, if they had access to the access code in the first place, which they shouldn't. You could reset it if you're concerned it's been compromised, theoretically. 
I'm not a cybersecurity expert, so take anything I say with a grain of salt, please. If security was such a big concern, why is their own software not secure? Bamboo Connect was hacked in a matter of hours, and all of the private keys necessary to interface with the printers were leaked. The issue is that they're all hard-coded in Bamboo Connect. The only way to do security properly is for the printer to phone home. If you're trying to do it in the cloud, that can work, but the issue is that we're now talking to the cloud again. That defeats the entire purpose of being in LAN mode. You now need an internet connection to run these printers. But even though Bamboo Connect was infiltrated so quickly and so easily that it was laughable, they didn't address it whatsoever. So is it gonna be secure? Or are they just going to use the same system and update the codes? So what they really need to do is just get out of our business. Give us access to our own printers. Let us determine our own destiny. We do not need your oversight, Bamboo, to control who can and cannot access the hardware that we bought and paid for. And shitification is a new word I learned through this whole drama. In other words, platform decay. It's the term used to describe the pattern in which online products and services decline in quality over time. Initially, vendors create high quality offerings to attract users. Then they degrade those offerings to better serve business customers. And finally, degrade their services to users and business customers to maximize profits for shareholders. Honestly, I think that summarizes this situation pretty well. Bamboo is doing whatever they can to make it as difficult as possible to use third-party hardware, to use third-party software, so that you stay in their ecosystem. They don't want you to add a touchscreen to your P1S, because then you're less likely to buy an X1 Carbon. They don't want you to add an RFID tag to your third-party spool, because then you're less likely to buy Bamboo Lab filament. They don't want you to use third-party print farm management software because they're developing their own. There's been information leaked about upcoming Bamboo Farm software, which is going to allow you to do many of the things that the current software solutions allow you to do. The difference is, in Bamboo's farm software, you'll be able to be in cloud mode. You'll have all of the conveniences of cloud. If you want to use third-party farm software, presumably you'll need to be in developer mode, which will take away the cloud conveniences. So everything Bamboo is doing is trying to steer you back into their pipeline, to stay in their ecosystem, their walled garden. They don't want to play nice with other people. They want to make it as difficult as possible for you to have the option as the consumer to pick and choose who you are going to give your money to. They wanna keep as much money in their own pockets as possible. I understand, your shareholders want value, you give them value. But if you do it at the expense of your reputation, it has the opposite effect. Think of all the bad press Bamboo has gotten from this. Think of all the people saying they'll never buy a Bamboo Lab printer again, canceling their orders. It is very bad press for Bamboo. And what they've done to make it right isn't enough. I'm sorry, it's just not. All right, I think that's it. That was my rant. I got a little excited, maybe said a few things I didn't mean, and maybe said a few things that weren't true. If you wanna fact check me, do it down in the comments. Usually I script these videos so they're a little more coherent and I don't come across like a crazy person. But in this scenario, I just wanted to speak freely, speak my mind and share with you some information that I think is useful, things that you should know. So if you appreciated that, and you wanna see more content like this, you know how to do it. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and thank you so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D.